Hi, I'm Tony Pearson, one of the partners and surveyors here at Sussex Surveyors. In this video, I'm going to outline how the Party Wall Act relates to you if you've had Party Wall notices served upon you. So under the Act, you're referred to as the adjoining owner, as opposed to in my last video where I outlined how the Act related to the building owner or the person proposing to do the work. So as the adjoining owner, you have three options available to you once you're served with notices. The first is you can consent to the works. Now I often hear people say, oh but if I consent to the works and damage occurs, I, they won't have to repair my property. That's not the case. There are provisions within the Act, for instance subsections 3 to 7 of section 2 outlines how repairs have to be made to your property. And there's also a catch-all with section 7 of the Act, which doesn't just stop at repairs having to be made, but it also includes any losses that occur. I had one where the adjoining owner's property was a rental property and it was no longer habitable once damage occurred. The building owner not only had to pay for the repairs but also had to pay for the lost rental income while the property was no longer habitable. If as the adjoining owner you have any reason at all to be concerned about the works which means you're not willing to give unconditional consent then we have what's referred to as a dispute. Some examples of this would include if the building owner was doing a loft conversion and you were worried about your conservatory roof being damaged, or the building owner is doing a rear extension, the fence between your two properties has to be removed so the wall can be built, you could be worried about your dog getting out during that time. Then those are all legitimate reasons and in which case as we have a dispute an award has to be prepared. Now the award can be prepared in one of two ways. It can either be prepared by one surveyor acting as the agreed surveyor, in which case that person acts for both the building owner and the adjoining owners, or the building owner can appoint their own surveyor and the adjoining owner also appoints a surveyor and those two surveyors prepare the award. Now I often hear people say, oh but I must have my own surveyor. The reality is though, it doesn't take two surveyors to prepare an award saying that the conservatory roof will be protected at all times. It doesn't take two surveyors to prepare an award saying a temporary fence will be put up to keep the dog in at all times. If the work is relatively simple, there is nothing wrong with having one surveyor acting as the agreed surveyor. Surveyors have to act professionally and cannot be dismissive of any concern that the adjoining owner has. The adjoining owner raises a concern, an award must be prepared. If however though the work is much more complicated, it is a good idea to have two surveyors involved. I've got one at the moment where a semi-detached house has been demolished, leaving the side wall of the other property exposed for two years while building work's going on. So as you can see that's quite complicated work and the potential for damage to occur is quite great. And in those situations it is advisable to have two surveyors involved. No matter which of the three options that the adjoining owner takes, it is absolutely essential that a schedule of condition on the adjoining owner's property is completed prior to the works commencing. This is a written and photographic record of the adjoining owner's property, which if for instance there are no cracks or damp patches in the adjoining owner's property, it states that and there are photos to prove it. This protects the adjoining owner so that should damage occur during the works, the building owner can't turn around and say it wasn't my work that caused that, that crack was already there. Of course the schedule of condition also can protect the building owner and that the adjoining owner who's had a crack or damp patch in their property for years can't turn around and say oh it was the building owner's work that caused that, he now must repair my property. So the schedule of condition is absolutely essential and should be done prior to the works commencing in all situations. Some other points for adjoining owners to be aware of. Let's say next door is doing loads of building work and you haven't been served with party wall notices. What can you do? Unfortunately, there's not a lot. The only thing you can do is take out a high court injunction, stopping them from doing their works. I would suggest you want to tread carefully before taking this option. It may be that no works were notifiable under the Act and that's why you haven't been served with notices. If that's the case, you'll be liable for all of the costs, including yours and theirs. Similarly, even if it turns out that you should have been served with party wall notices, historically you will only probably get back about 60 to 70 percent of your costs, so you will be out of pocket. All the High Court injunction will do is stop them from doing their work, they can then serve you with the notices, you work through the process that we talked about earlier with regards to the award, and then they get on with the work. So all you will have achieved 
is cost yourself money and cause them some delay. And of course, I'm sure you can appreciate, taking out high court injunctions on your neighbours does wonders for neighbourly relations. One of the things to be aware of is that the adjoining owner cannot actually stop the building owner's work. The Act is often referred to as an enabling Act. For instance, I often hear adjoining owners say, oh well I'll just ignore that w those notices and that will stop their project. It doesn't work like that. Within the Act there's provisions that if you don't respond within 14 days, a 10 day notice can be served upon you. If you don't respond to that, and a surveyor can be appointed for you, an award can be prepared and the works can progress whether you've responded to the notices or not. The final point that adjoining owners need to be aware of is once the notifiable work is completed, the matter is closed. So for instance, if the only part that's notifiable under the Act is the excavation for the foundations, once the foundations are formed, the party wall surveyors will come around, make sure that no damage has occurred to your property, and then the matter is closed. If damage occurs to your property later, relating to work not notifiable under the, the Act, then it's not for party wall surveyors to deal with. Thanks for watching. I know this subject can be a bit dry, but hopefully you've found it relevant. Our ultimate aim is to see people get the extensions they want without it becoming stressful upon them and their neighbours. If there's anything else we can do to help you with, please don't hesitate to call.